Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here for VideoCopilot.net, and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. And uh, of course it's exciting. They're all exciting. Well, not all of them, and certainly not this one, but we are going to be learning some cool stuff. So let's take a look at what we're going to be creating. Okay, pretty simple thing here, but I want to focus on two interesting concepts. One, creating particles that only exist in the light streams. Number two, creating this sort of radial shadow that kind of falls off away from the text to give it a little bit of depth in the composite. So, this is the idea. If we get pretty close to it, hey, I'll be, uh, I'll be happy. All right, let's get started. We're going to create a new composition and we'll do NTSC DV and we'll do 23.976 at 10 seconds long and we'll choose OK. And then we're going to come over here to the images and we're going to use one of these as the background and specifically number one, which is sort of like this uh, cement wall. Now we want to go ahead and scale it down until it fills the frame, you know, pretty evenly. And then the next thing we want to do is create our text layer. So uh, this gets pretty advanced, but just click up here on the text tool and we'll just type video copilot. And then I want to pre-compose the text. So I'm going to select it, layer, pre-compose, and move all attributes and we'll call this title and then I'll choose OK. Now the next thing I want to do is just a little bit of color correction. I want to take our background and darken it a bit. So I'll use the curves adjustment and we'll just uh, bring this down some. Actually I want to really take the contrast out of the image. And also I want to create a little bit of a vignette. So we'll create a new adjustment layer and we'll add a curves adjustment and uh, we'll bring the darkness down and then we're going to use an ellipse tool mask so we'll double click on that creates an ellipse we'll set it to subtract and then we'll toggle down the mask controls and turn up the feathering so this is going to get us started I also want to add a little bit of that smoky background that you saw in the original comp and to create that we're going to use a particle system so we'll create a new solid and we'll just call this uh, particle waves and we'll choose OK. So I'll choose effect simulation particle world and we'll turn the grid options off and we'll go into the physics. We'll turn the velocity of the particles down to zero and the gravity also down to zero. Then if we go down to the particle options, we can set it to a faded sphere. Now we can see it. And then we'll turn up the producer size. So we'll increase it so that it sort of covers the entire frame, maybe a little bit of Z space. Now for these particles, we want them to be a little bit larger. So we'll turn that up. And then we actually want to turn the gravity on so that the particles sort of move across the screen and not not too quickly but just a little bit now I also want to change the color of the particles to be sort of a grayish blue color and we also may turn the size up again maybe a little bit lighter here and then we can also turn up the life of the particles to about two and that way we have just a lot of particles in our scene and we can even turn up the size variation or down just to see a lot more of the smaller particles. Now the trick to this is adding a warp effect, a mesh warp. And we'll take that and we'll drop that onto the particle waves and we'll set the rows to three by three. And what we want to do is change the direction of the particle. So currently they're streaming downward. Now we want to sort of change that by uh, playing around with this mesh warp option and this is just going to give us some you know unnatural movement that we would otherwise not get from such a basic uh, you know particle system where the gravity is just pushing the particles downward okay so that is that let's change the transfer mode to screen 
and we'll turn the opacity down also. So here we just have this uh, wispy looking uh, thing going on. Okay, now let's create our micro particles. So I'm gonna create another new solid. And we'll call this small particles and we'll choose okay. And I'm gonna change the tag color to something different so I can see that these are different items. So I'll choose effect, simulation, particle world. And here we'll shut off the grid options. And we want to make the particles zero velocity and turn the gravity also to zero. We'll change the particle type to faded sphere again. And we'll increase the size of the producer. So pretty similar to what we just did. We just want these particles to be a lot smaller. So we'll go down here and uh, we'll turn the birth size down and the death size down and uh, maybe even smaller than that. And uh, we'll turn the birth rate up a bit, and maybe the life to about two. And we want to make sure you're moved forward in time so you can see uh, where these particles are going to be and how thick it's actually going to look. And we'll come back down to the color and uh, we'll choose like a tan color here. And a little variation um, isn't a bad thing for this particular example. And again, we want these to be rather small particles. So now I want to create our visible light. So I'm going to create a new solid again. And we'll call this light. And I'll choose OK. Then I'll choose Effect, Noise and Grain, Fractal Noise. So we're going to use this to sort of generate some light streaks. So I'll come over here to the Transform Settings. We'll uncheck Uniform Scaling. And we're going to turn the height up really high. Uh, that looks pretty good. And maybe turn the brightness and the contrast up, or rather the brightness down. Maybe the height up a bit. So I have these long streaks here. Also, we'll choose Effect Transition Linear Wipe. And uh, that's what you're looking for there. And we'll change the angle so that it sort of cuts off the bottom. So we'll set it to zero. Add a little bit of feathering here and uh, just extend it as far as we can. And that way the light will sort of fall off into the distance a little bit nicer. And uh, for now we'll go ahead and set the transfer mode to screen. So we blend that in with the comp. And here we can play around with the contrast and maybe bring the light back just a little bit so it's not as intense. Now we are going to make this a 3D layer. So we'll toggle the switches and we'll set that layer to be 3D. And then if we take that layer on the Z axis and move it forward, we can actually take the rotation tool and, you know, move it around and get a little bit of some depth here. We can scale it back and uh, play around. And the other thing we want to do is give the light a little bit of movement. So we'll alt click on the evolution and we'll type time multiply uh, 200. So we're taking the current time and multiplying it by 200. So if you want to slow it down, just lower this number and the evolution will slow down. We have our light and uh, we want to add more light. So we're going to duplicate the light layer. So edit, duplicate. And here we want to offset the evolution. Well, we can't really change the evolution right now because it's all based on an expression. So a quick way to fix that is just to add a number, add like 500. So then it's just taking the time, multiplying it times 100, and then just adding a random number. And that way it's different than the one before. it. So that works pretty good. Then we take this layer, light B, and we can move it forward in Z space. And uh, that way, if we create a camera, we can move around and it will actually look like we're in 3D space. So if I move this up here, we want to adjust a few things so that we are looking at 3D layers. And specifically, we want our title to be 3D and we want our background texture to be 3D. But these other layers, the particle layers, actually are 3D within the plugin. So we don't need to change those. Now our camera is a little bit too close, so if we take the Z track tool, we can actually back up, kind of travel through that light, which is 
pretty cool actually. And then what we can do is sort of compensate for that. We can either scale up the background elements or we can take the camera and zoom it in. So if we hit AA, bring up the camera options and we can zoom it in. And then if we uh, move through here, you can see we have some 3D looking light. Now let's go and add a quick camera move. Now usually I would use a null object, but we're just going to do a simple camera move. So we'll turn on the keyframe for the position. And by the way, if you hit P, that brings up the position for a layer. And uh, we'll move forward just a bit here. And we can either increase the value for the Z, or we can take the Z track tool and uh, move in and out. So it's up to you. Now another thing I want to make sure I do is focus on the animation about three or four seconds in because our particles aren't quite born yet. I'm just going to move my keyframes and we'll just focus on this area right here. Now as far as the light goes, what I need to do is pre-compose that light. So I'll take our light, hold down shift, take our other light and choose layer pre-compose and we'll call this light comp and choose OK. Now the thing about pre-composing layers is that they no longer adhere to the camera and 3D position of this comp except if we turn on this switch. You turn that on and now those layers are viewed as if they were in this comp but the good thing is they're represented by a single layer and that's nice because then we can move it around without having to worry about keeping track of uh, multiple layers. Now let's go and duplicate that layer. So I'll choose edit, duplicate. And so now we have two copies of the same exact light. Now what we want to do is make our particles only show up where that light hits them. Now it's not going to be perfect 3D, but it will create a very interesting illusion. And what we need to do is use the track mat. So make sure you toggle the switch, Bring up the track mat for the small particles and make sure that the light comp is right above. And then we're going to change this to luma mat. And then if we solo that layer, we can very faintly see some of the particles. Now we're going to enhance that by taking the light comp and adding a curves adjustment. So we'll turn that up. And so now you can see some of the particles are starting to come in. And if we turn that layer on real quick, you can actually see what that looks like. So we may even turn it up even brighter so that those small particles start showing through. Now if I scrub through this, you can actually see that the particles only exist where the light shines through. So just kind of an interesting effect, uh, just adds a little bit of atmosphere to this title design. And we might even bring the opacity of the light down and uh, We'll do some color correction and stuff a little bit later on. But next, we need to focus on creating that shadow that we saw in the original example. So it's pretty easy, and that's what's cool about this uh, particular tutorial. Now, what we need to do is take our title layer and duplicate it. So we'll choose Edit, Duplicate. Now, the bottom one is going to be the shadow, and the top one is going to be sort of our 3D looking text. So we'll take that and we're going to choose layer, layer styles, bevel and emboss. And uh, wow, that looks fantastic. Um, obviously, we don't want to use that at the default level, but if we play around with it, we can actually get a pretty interesting look. So we're going to turn the depth up. Now, if you're good at Photoshop, you kind of know what these all mean. Um, otherwise, uh, just play around with the settings until you kind of see something interesting. We're going to turn the depth up. We're going to bring the size down real low, maybe to 2, maybe to 1. Now I want to change the altitude and I want you to look right here on the edge. And as I change it, the light gets away from the outer edge and sort of moves inward. Now the other thing I want to do is add a very soft shadow with the layer style. So I'll select the layer, layer, layer style, drop shadow and we'll come down here to the drop shadow option and we'll turn the distance to zero and we'll turn up the size and we'll bring the opacity down like we really want this to just be very very soft because our real shadow is going to be the layer beneath it now to do that layer we we'll to turn it back on and we'll choose effect blur Radial Blur. 
Now we wanna change the type to a straight zoom. And then if we increase the amount, you can see we're just creating sort of like a light um, effect. But we don't really wanna do that. In fact, we wanna change it to black. So we'll choose generate fill, and we'll go ahead and set it to uh, black. And then we'll take the radial blur and we'll move the position all the way up and above and out of the comp. So we'll just uh, put it way up here. Now our shadow is very long, so we'll bring the amount down. And so now we're starting to create a very interesting looking shadow. And just play around uh, with this setting until you get something that looks pretty good. But you have to admit that alone just gives it some depth that we otherwise don't see with a normal drop shadow. It actually looks like somebody meticulously nailed each one of these metal characters to this wall. Okay, never mind. Now, you also want to make sure that your bevel emboss light is in line with your shadow. So right now it's sort of coming from the side and we actually may want to go into the bevel and change the angle so that it's right overhead. Or maybe we do put it off to the side and we just change the shadow. So it's up to you. And you could probably even go on to our forum and ask somebody to uh, show you the expression for linking a rotation value to a position value. And you can actually link this rotation to the position of this radial blur and it'll actually automate based on the position of this uh, blur point. Uh, but I won't get into that uh, right now. Um, anyway, this is looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and do some color correction so we can really make this design pop. Now one thing I did was I took one of my textures, which is kind of orange yellow, and I brought it out and I changed the transfer mode to overlay. And then I scaled it down so that it fit the comp and I also turned on the 3D layer switch and turn the opacity down to about 50%. So what that does is one, it gives us a little bit of a color cast, but it also gives us a texture on our text as well as the background. So it really gives it an interesting look. So now we're also gonna add an adjustment layer and we're gonna use effect, color correction, tint, and effect, color correction, curves. Now we'll bring the tint amount down very low and then we'll give our curves adjustment sort of a contrast curve. And this is gonna just start to make uh, this text kind of pop out a little bit more and uh, hopefully make this uh, design a little bit more interesting. Okay, so a pretty cool effect. Didn't take that long and uh, certainly there's some cool tips here that you can uh, use for some other projects. And uh, you might be wondering what this actually means. Well, it's actually, uh, nothing. I just, uh, like the way that those characters looked. So, uh, you know, that's what we went with. But you can also use a logo and basically it'll automatically update with all of the settings and all of the 3D stuff that we just did. So you could easily just churn these out and make, uh, you know, a whole bunch of titles, uh, for whatever you're working on. So that's why I like to pre-compose the text is that way if I need to change it, I don't have to worry about extra copies, um, you know, that I'm forgetting to change. Well, I better get going. Um, I'm pretty thirsty. I could definitely go for a, a very cold, refreshing Pepsi right now. So I'm going to get going, but uh, thanks for watching. And of course, check out our blog, check out our forum, uh, a lot of cool stuff going on there. And, you know, be sure to check out our DVDs, uh, plenty of cool stuff there to enhance your work as well. My name is Andrew Kramer, and uh, we'll see you next time.